Perhaps aware of their reputation, they came urging restraint. Instead, leaders of this far-right protest in Dover tried sharp language to try and warn off police. Don't touch me, don't try and me today, because I'm a than That didn't always work. Some distanced themselves from the scuffles, even if they agreed with the general sentiment. People quite rightly in this country, quite rightly believe that our country is, is under invasion. Um, they're expressing it quite violently here in a lot of it, but, but people are angry. Refugees are here. In the centre of town, a counter-protest. It grieves me, it grieves me greatly to see the stupid rhetoric of people that should know better. Again, just a few hundred gathered, a sign of the times. Few issues stoke stronger emotions in the UK right now than the migration debate on whichever side of it you lie. But hitting the streets in protest during a pandemic comes with risks. Indeed, the Conservative MP for Dover had pleaded with demonstrators to stay away. But Natalie Elphick's still been a vocal advocate of her governing party's hardening stance on the number of migrants crossing the English Channel from France in recent weeks. Posting this video on Twitter in mid-August next to a dinghy used to smuggle people across. This is unacceptable that people are breaking into Britain in this way. Home Affairs Minister Priti Patel paid a visit here last month too. She wants France to do more to stop people leaving in the first place. There's even talk of new powers to send people back after they land in the UK. Instead, the British government wants asylum seekers to take the legal route. But since lockdowns, the country's resettlement programme has been suspended, leaving those risking this treacherous journey in record numbers, seeing this as the only way to go. Guy Henderson, CGTN, Dover.